everybody, my name is Farmer Phil and in today's video we are going to be mowing, ba mowing, rowing and baling our field of red clover which we put in. So this is our red clover, the variety is Ferga and we got it off bowl crop. So we have a little bit of adjusting to do on the mowers. Before we do that we'll just have a kind of a quick look so you can see all the hit of clover in it. Huge, huge amount of clover. Now there's some weeds there, it's may weed I think. Um, there's some chickweed coming in it there, but mostly now it's it's what we want. There's a huge, huge hit of clover in it, especially around the gate. There's a lot of clover in it, so you, you can see yourself, lots of clover. Med is not over heavy, but we do have quite a lot of grass to start come see, especially when you go into the field a bit. There's a little bit of compaction inside the gap. Further out you go, you can kind of see lot of seed in it, lot of grass gone to seed. So. We're not sure whether the red clover's on far enough, but we're going to gamble it and cut it now to get a good fresh regrowth before we start losing too much quality in the grass. So one thing we have to do is adjust our mowers. With the red clover, I think clover in general, especially red clover, there's a nodule just above the ground that where is where they grow from. And if you cut that nodule, it doesn't regrow, the plant dies. Whereas grass, you can literally skin a hat to clay and the part, the point where it regrows from is below the clay. But a red clover, that's above the clay. And it's it's the first nodule. And uh, unfortunately, I'm not that great at trying to find that. But that's what I do know. Now it could be, there's a plant of red clover there. And it could be that point there. So, I don't know how well you can see. But somewhere there. So you have to cut it up high, because if you damage, that bottom part you lose your red clover and we want to be getting four or five years out of this so I have to shorten both top links front and back and then that should kick up the mower and should solve that problem so we get that done okay one more done so we're going to be mowing this out flat and that's because we need to get a good will on this what we were told was with the clover because it's so high in nitrogen in general because it's fixing nitrogen into the plant that it's high in nitrogen and if you bale it while it's wet or fresh your silage doesn't ferment well you get black silage it's not great so it needs to wilt really well before we can bale it so we'll mow it out flat but we cannot touch it with a tether because as it seems a bit like alfalfa you'll damage them leaves all that protein that we have the red clover for is all in the leaves and you can easily damage the leaves when it starts to dry. So we will not be touching it with a tether. And we also, it'll be just road baled and that'll be it. There'll be no turning it, there's no nothing. Leave it out flat and get a good wilt on it and try not damage the leaf too much. We'd have to put down some legs here. So I get this back more turned up a bit. We're back in the tractor, top link lengthen. I got, I think three turns on is what I've done. Headline management, button down, spray down, looks good, we're up, that more is up, so I think we're ready to go, I open it up on this, and we go mark in a line boundary infills yeah so we're ready to go so we'll get this field opened up hopefully now i mean more set up not too bad to get that good long stubble but still get enough it's not going to be over heavy this not at any way shape or form but yes we get stuck into it also one well, of the best things i bought all year uh a fan just on the switch great job because i still don't have a blower in the cab but that does everything I need to do. Bought it actually, bought it off office, Sparky, so I did. In the cabin. Got mowers on. Sounds good. Throttle. We're mapping the field. Skip that bit there. Down. That down. Right, I 
I'll go away the camera until I get the back squat done because I do like I like paying attention to all that. That seems to be leaving a nice as I said, oh, I like paying attention. That does seem to be leaving a nice stubble length there. Yeah, go away the camera. We get this field opened up. Just doing the third round of the field here. It is a nice bit heavier in the middle of the field. Not it's not a heavy crap by any means, but it is heavier in the middle. Seems to be doing a nice job there now. Uh, I'm happy with the height of the here. Seems to be a nice bit of a stubble tour. Flying along here at 11 kilometers, or just under 11. I love basically say 11 kilometers an hour there. So, it is. And also, I have taken everyone's advice. And this seems to be the best way of getting that little bit there that you just cannot get. But, um, yeah. We get it more here, man. The finest office steers engaged. All the usual. But we have a new button here now. So that button now engages my headland management. So Mick from Trimble come up and he fitted me and he got a massive switch as you can see, same as that one, but that's wired to the Trimble unit so I can engage using that button now, it saves me stretching forward too, so happy days. I know I've done three rounds, normally I do four rounds to give it enough time to square itself up, but it's not too bad at that, and away we go again. So flying through this, it's not mad heavy or anything but don't see for more on not too bad right now. Be interested to see how it how it yields and how what the feed quality is like. So it will be very, very interesting to see. I'm confused. Internet's gone low, so time is for making of it yours so i'ma sit and just lay in my bed with the fries in my head getting stuck to the race with you for a sleep and cruise no stress is getting just a little bit lower mine's getting just a little bit closer so that's the field mode i just folded up in the middle just kind of show you what it's like in the middle of the field so there does seem to be little tufts didn't mustn't have rolled that well there just seem to be little tufts in it of clay that were hit but um no so you can see got the clover in it so yeah so as i said we want to protect the leaves the feeding value what we're after is in that leaf so we do not want to damage that and i think we've caught it nice and high there so you like you can eat you can still see some of the younger leaves on the clover plant still down there so I think we've left that uh, a pretty good height there. So I can still see them leaves. So that's that's a good sign. That should come back nice and quickly. So yeah, overall, quite happy with that. You always have to smell the grass. So I'd say off the five acres, there's somewhere between 15, 20 bales. I know it's not a lot, but with the grass like that, gone to stem and gone to seed, we needed to cut it before the quality got too low. And then one thing that it will do after it's been cut is we'll get a big tiller on the grass so it'll get more dense in the sward. Um, I don't think the red clover doesn't do any tillering, but the grass will get denser in the sward so it'll be more on it the next time round. Um, so yeah, that's it. Uh, we'll talk more about the red clover, why we're using that when we come back to bale it. And I'm going to be on home. So the first second cut's on the ground. Uh, yeah, one thing I suppose. So just to give you an idea of the growth on that. So we sowed this the remember remember it was the 14th or 15th of may we sold it the same day we actually started uh, our first job of silage and it is now the 14th of july am i right yeah am i right so happy bastille day to everyone in france that is watching the french holiday for storming bastille if i remember rightly but um so yeah it is what's that eight weeks grown so that's eight weeks of growth since sown. So anyways, we'll be on home and we'll come back to it either tomorrow evening or Saturday morning to bail it up. We'll see what kind of wilt we get by this evening or tomorrow morning and then we'll decide whether when we row it, we'll give it, we'll give it an hour or two after rowing before we bail it. 
just to maximize that extra bit of wilting that we get after pulling it into the larger swarm. Anyways, we'll be on home. Hello people of the internet. I am Brother Phil and today, well you'll only be with me for a few minutes anyway. Today I'm going to be raking the red clover and I'll just show you how dry the grass is and to show you raking them, that's really it. I'm in, I'm in the red clover, as you can see. The grass looks fairly dry, a bit of dampness, but ooh, it's dry enough. Or, well, clover, or whatever it is. All I gotta do is just rake it up. Okay, and this chapter I don't like, anyway. Yeah, fine. So, <clears throat> we are now up in the red clover field. Bro has it rode. <clears throat> for all about an hour-ish, maybe a bit wet hit. So just to give it that extra bit of wilting on the underside after getting rode. Um, as I said at the start, it's not something you want maximum amount of wilt without turning it. Because you do not want to damage the leaf. Bro is actually just about to pull in the gate there behind me to start stacking the bales. He'll arrive in there any second. Where is he? And there he is. 62.90. He's going to stack the bales. We'll see where we're going to put them now. Last year we put stacked the bales along there. The issue we do have is I'd love to just... But that's what I'm trying to figure out. I would like to be putting them in here, but the drinker's there, so if we ever did have to let cattle out here, I actually could have mowed. I didn't know that. Oh yeah, there's stones from around the drinker, so I didn't mow that. And then you had stones there. Yeah. But what I'm thinking is, I think bro, we'll stack them from here, that way. Yeah? It has wilted up very nicely. Still is a bit of green in it, but it is well wilted. And you can see the bits of red clover in it there. That have wilted up, they've shriveled. It's very easy to lose the, the leaf when it's shriveled. It'll just break up. So it's not, it's not too bad now. So it's not, should make top quality fodder. So load up rack. So we load her up. So we're going to be chopping this and we're also going to be putting on extra wrap because well we've aimed for it to be that bit drier and we want to make sure we get a good insile on it a good insile now camera and this never works A bit of damage on the plastic there. Hopefully that got off. It's not something you really want to be damaging. Get the price of it. No, we're ready to go. So, first round of the field bale, three bales on it. So yeah, it's not over heavy, but it, is, it will get heavier as we get in. But still, it's not. It's not heavy by any stretch of the imagination. But um, flying along here. Here on the ground very well. We keep being away, this won't take very long. Uh, Uncle Ian will be coming up with Liv, he's mad to see how the red clover is looking. And Liv is going to paint ones or paint something on them bales so we know that they're the first cut of red clover because we want to silage test them. We want to get it tested when the time comes to see what her proteins were, how, how did it actually do for us. Um, see the bale going out there. They look a nice, from the camera now, they look a nice dry bale, which is good. That's what we're after, a good wilt on them. Yes. We keep bailing, we'll fire up the drone when we get into the middle of the field. And... I'ma sit and just lay in my bed with the fries in my head getting stuck to the race with you. For a sleep and cruise, no. Stress is getting just a little bit lower. Mine's getting just a little bit closer. Find somebody in my life that can make it for. 
Last I'll be found in the broken A way out in the crowd feeling all pain Find somebody in my life that can make it for That one's just me, Tom Strong Didn't take very long. 20 bales of five acres. Oh, it's that four bales to the acre. So, yeah, <laughs> I've already said it. Not heavy. Pull in under the hedge there. We're gonna go, we're all going to go off to Mac Shacks in Kina for the dinner. It's our local restaurant. And we supply them beef. We supply them diced and minced beef. So if you're ever passing through Kina, call into them and try the Shack Burger. It should be called the Belly Buster Burger because they had some feed. And that is all the finest Frisian and Jersey bull beef from our farm. But anyways, there is a few more bales to bring in. What do you think, Liv? You happy painting? Yeah? I see you've drew a few things, Eric. Stickman. So everyone knows Eric left it wonky. Eric left it wonky, okay. So what are you going to do for the second cut bales? What way are you thinking of painting them? And number two. Number two. Okay. So this is just how we'll know these are first cut and then we'll... So I suppose we'll explain what we're going to do. There's a stone. No, how I didn't mince that into the moor. But the plan with the red clover now is we're going to get slurry on it. Put out maybe 3,000 gallons, 3,500 gallons to the acre. Give it a right good doing. That's all it needs. And we'll cut it again sometime in September. We'll probably graze it again before the last cattle come off this farm in for the winter at some stage after that. And then we'll go again for next year. Hopefully next year we'll get three if not four cuts. Uh, we were a little bit late sowing it, hence we're only going to get two cuts off it. And the reason we are baling it and not putting it into the pit is so that we can give this targeted to the wainlands, which is what we want to feed it. If we put this into the pit, It'll be lost in the middle of it. Five acres in a pit is 60 acres or 70 acres. We'll get lost in it. The benefits of it would just be lost in everything else. So with the bales and with them chopped, we'll be able to divvy bits of this into the diet feeder for our wainlands and see can we get better growth rates out of our wainlands while they're in the shed. It's one area where our wainlands never seem to grow, do that well. The growth rates are kind of poor. Any of the smaller calves, seem to make huge growth rates in the shed but the larger calves don't seem to make the best growth rates so hopefully with the red clover silage which should be higher in protein we should get higher weights and that's why we're wrapping baling it and that's what it's for targeted feeding to our wainlands to see can we get some more weight on them in the shed has he ripped any Oh, that's good anyways so that's what it's for one other thing i want to try 
with this, this is the first year and it's something I've been thinking about is trying feeding some of this to the suck calves when they're in the shed while we're rearing them on milk I know some people feed silage to the calves in the shed for the roughage we feed hay and straw there's very there's basically no feeding value in the straw maybe a bit in the hay but not major but in, in my mind if we can feed them silage and if we were to feed them this stuff which hopefully will test very well high protein and good quality stuff calves have the best food conversion ratio when they're calves so their first what is it two months or three i don't know how long it is but when they're suck calves that's when they the they put on the most weight based on how much they eat so my thinking is giving them a higher protein roughage or higher quality roughage should get some extra weight gain in the shed when they should do that bit better so that's something i'm going to be trying if anyone's tried that before let me know or what do you think is a madness so it's going to be very interesting to see how it goes so we'll stack them there when we get the second cut cut we'll bring all home with us and then that way we'll be safe there'll be no cattle coming in here till after the second cut um, but one of the downsides to the clover it's not something you want to graze much because you do run the risk of bloating cattle but when it's inside we've been told there's no issues at all just another thing on the tractor your tractor is very dirty and dusty that's because i was um harrowing uh, harrowing in a reseed last night that had a uh, lime spread on it and it's very dusty leave a comment down below is there anything more dusty than lime i don't think there is that's it eric his last bales gathered so we're gonna go get our dinner i hope you enjoyed today's video if you have any questions about the red clover or anything like that please let me know in the comments down below the red clover variety we have in here is ferga it's the first irish bred and grown variety so big thanks to ball crop for supplying us with the red clover and hopefully we'll see how it goes and hopefully we have some high protein high quality silage in them bales there but anyways that is it from us please like and subscribe to the channel videos every tuesday thursday and sunday good luck